Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council, navigating the human experience together. Hafadé, Terro, and welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today we're going to be learning about a serene spot here in Saipan that's quite popular with both locals and residents to visit, and the family that is responsible for it. I'm talking about Santa Lourdes, and joining us today is Manny Flores Borja. Senor, welcome to the show. Welcome. So nice to see you. Thank you for yes. coming and sharing um, a bit about your family's part in Santa Lourdes mm -hmm. or Our Lady of Lourdes, mm -hmm. um, named for a statue of the Virgin Mary that is tucked away there in mm -hmm. Asteo Saipan. What can you tell us about how this statue came to be in the Marianas? How old is it? <clears throat> yes, uh, let me perhaps start with, uh, start from the beginning. Yes, please. And that's um, about 166 years ago, in uh, 18, um, 1858, about 100 and... <laughs> 100 Let's do the math, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 166 years ago, <clears throat> there's a place in France called Lourdes, and according to the story, Our Lady appeared to Bernadette. Bernadette was a young lady. And so being in, in, in Lord's France, you know, like when Our Lady appeared to the three children in Fatima, she's referred to as Our Lady of Fatima, so here Our Lady of Lords because she appeared in Lords in France. <coughs> Our Lady appeared starting February 11, and she continued to appear to Bernadette until July. And um, in one of those appearances that Our Lady <coughs> um, showed herself to Bernadette, she told Bernadette to dig a hole, to dig the ground. And when she did, water started to, to come out. Uh, like spring water. Like spring water, more intensely, yes. And so there's the setting of the grotto and the water. And, um, <clears throat> and so in terms of Our Lady of Lourdes, you know, in the Marianas, we have shrines to Our Lady of Lourdes on Guam, Rhoda, Tinian, Saipan. And on Saipan, the particular statue there at Our Lady of Lourdes came from Japan between 1920 and 1930. We're not sure whether the statue was made in Japan or was made someplace else, but it was brought to Saipan from Japan by a family and donated the statue to the, to the, to the church. Like a Japanese family? No, a local family. Okay. Yes. <coughs> and, because there uh, was some travel back in those days between Japan and the Marianas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our people would go there and of course a lot of their people came here, so. Yes. Okay. Yes, <clears throat> and so during the Japanese time, the, the uh, capital of Saipan was in Garpan, so the church in Garpan, and so they, they built a little, little like, grotto-like thing, and they put the statue there <clears throat> on the compound of uh, the church. But then after the war, after World War II, the church was demolished, and so they took the statues, including the Our Lady of Florida statue, to, to uh, Chalan Kanoa. And they had a, <coughs> a, a small chapel. The place was close to, to where the post office is now. And so at that time, they were also building what is now the cathedral. And so in 1950, <coughs> The, 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 
the nuns that came here to Saipan were from Beris in Spain. The Mercedarian nuns. The Mercedarian nuns. missionaries of Beris. Yeah. And Beris is in northern Spain, and Lourdes is in southern France. So it's just about like two, two hours, some drive between Beris and Lourdes. And so the, the nuns there are aware of the, the Lord's place. In fact, Mother Margarita, who, Maturana, who came to Saipan, who founded the Mercedes, visited uh, Lourdes. And so <clears throat> in 1950, when the nuns were visiting people, you know, uh, on the island, and they saw the place that has the water and that has the the grotto suggested to the family to request the priest to have that statue that, is, that was from Garapan down to Chalancaora to be brought there to the. In Asteo. In Asteo. Mm -hmm. So in December of 1950, the statue was brought to Asteo. And in February of 1951 is the start of the novena of Our Lady of Lourdes mm -hmm. on Saipan. And since then, every year, we've had the, the, you know, the, the, the novenas and fiesta mm -hmm. and, and, um, continuously. So we are going to have the 75th anniversary in about two years. Very good. What can you tell us about when the, the um, Santa Lourdes was in the church in Garapan during the war? I understand there was a little bit of an interesting story about uh, the church was destroyed because of the bombing, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the statues that survived? <clears throat> yes, the, the statue was not inside the church. In Garpani, it was outside, you know, on a grotto, man-made yeah, yeah. place. Yeah, so apparently it wasn't destroyed, mm. then, yes. For those that maybe haven't seen it, can you describe what the statue looks like? <coughs> it's about <laughs> this tall. About three feet? About three feet, yes. Okay. And uh, <coughs> that place in Asteo, though, you know, um, through the typhoons and, and all that, it never really damaged, damaged the place mm -hmm. either, yeah. And so the... the um, the family has taken care of the shrine ever since, yes. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about a little bit more about this natural grotto in Esteo, where the shrine is now. When people, number one, Esteo is a very quiet, peaceful village. I'm not sure how many people you have living there, but when you pull into the village, um, what is it a person will see walking up? Yes, uh, a historical fact is, 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 is this that many people may not know, but on the road going down to, on the Santa Lourdes Road, there is just, just, a, just before you turn right to Asteo Road where Santa Lourdes is, it was actually a tunnel. The, 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 the rocks, you know, was together and it was a tunnel so the Santa L uh, the road the road itself Santa Lourdes Rose was a tunnel because when you drive through it now you can see that there's rocks yes. on both sides yes. very close it was a tunnel it was a tunnel but it wasn't a big enough tunnel for like two cars to go and uh, it was always moist you know and slippery and then <clears throat> according to people they, they said that the crane could not go through and so they had to dynamite it. I remember as a kid they told us not to go to the farm for a week or so because they were dynamiting. Dynamite, yes. And so tunnel. when we came back the, the farmhouse with the tin roofs were all with holes because of the rocks. You know it was all over the place. The rocks are all over the place. But it was a tunnel before. Mm. It would have been so it's so, so nice to know if, if, if the tunnel is still there, but, but it's not. And, and so the, the road now is, uh, 
it's, it's as it is now. Mm. Yes, but but yeah, um, interestingly, it was a tunnel before. So your farm back in those days was in Esteo, is that what you're saying? Well, that's Where correct. did you live at the time, and how often would you guys go to the farm? Yes, um, in those days, a lot of families have, they, they live in the village and then they have their farm. Mm -hmm. With us, we, we live in Susupi, and our farm is in Esteo. And my father would, would go every day to the farm, and we would go there on weekends. And then during the summer, we all moved from Suzuki to live in the farm in Esteo. Well, that sounds fun. It is. It is, it is How fun. did your dad get from Suzuki to Esteo? Because that is several miles go heading uphill on the way yes. over. It happened that they taught him how to drive. Oh, great. So I thought drove. maybe he was taking the bull cart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. Yeah. So... Before he goes to the to the farm, he would, he would always like take a burlap bag, you know, because he would always find like coconut crab on the along the road, you know. Those were the the days when they were plentiful of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you get to where the um, where Santa Lourdes is now, what is it a person will see there? Uh, yes. if they haven't been there before. Yes. <clears throat> so there's the fig tree right on top of the 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 rock, the, the, the grotto. And it kind of like gives a canopy. And a lot of people, um, you know, find that nice. Because it's beautiful. There's this huge canopy, except that for those who clean it, more than twice a year, all the leaves will fall down and you would have to continuously clean. But yeah. Um, Sorry, when you say for those who clean it, that's kind of you and your family, right? That's correct. <laughs> okay, I like the way you say that very nicely. Yes. Okay, so there's a huge, there's a bit of a like, cliff and then there's a huge tree on top that makes yes. a canopy, yeah. And it's a huge tree actually. Mm, and the and roots come down the over the rock. The roots come down and it extends out. And um, it's very nice, very nice. It's also one of the few places on Saipan with a freshwater spring, correct? Yes, and so that spring has been there for, you know, as part of the natural, uh, what do we say, as part of the place, it's part. And so the, the spring, um, Eventually, they, they put a well, <clears throat> and then you, you can, you know, uh, take water using a bucket. But then, as more people you come to visit, sometimes they, uh, some things fell, fell down to the well, so we covered it. And then eventually, we, we um, put a pump mm -hmm. from there to, to the pump, so now, um, that the water is, is pure. And the last major typhoon, Typhoon U2, <clears throat> when there wasn't much water around the island, a lot of people came to the shrine to, to take water, like almost 24 hours, little cars were lined up, and it, it served the community, so that was good. There's some, what, was that um, spring there? Do you remember that spring from when you were a child going to the farm? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes. Um, are there any particular beliefs among the people related to the spring water? <clears throat> well, any place, any, any place in the world where there is water, there's, there's always uh, special energy, you know, like healing energy. So that's where the ocean is very healing because it's a big and so with that place of course it has a special energy um, and so the well every year is, is blessed and uh, sometimes people who have gone to Lourdes in France would carry some of the water from France and pour it down in the there to make it more special. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes. And so some people claim to have been really helped by, by Mary. Oh, there was this guy who said that he got into an accident and he had um, 
vision to go to the place where there's water. So he was in Guam at that time, and when he, the first thing he did when he came to Saipan was, uh, he, he's from Saipan, but when he came back to Saipan, the um, first thing he did was went to Santa Lourdes and just splashed water off. Rinsed himself Rinsed off. Rinsed and, yeah. and it, it, it did heal him. Mm. Yes. Have you personally, um, or what has been your personal experience with the water? Anything special, or do you? What's the taste of it? <laughs> you know, because we we have the water lands, and there's salt water under our water. I've always found the water there to be quite f f uh, sweet. Yes, uh, the, the, yes, because uh, it is up above the sea level, no? and so it's not mixed with with the salt water. But uh, I personally do not have any special kind of um, experience, but people tell me. And, um, but I, I do drink the water. <laughs> That's uh, much of the water I drink is from there. Because I believe that also, you know, the spring water is alive, you know, as opposed to, like, say, the um, distilled water. Yeah. So for me, uh, spring water is healthier than, uh, let's say, distilled water. Mm -hmm. And it's so convenient because it's almost right across the street That's from here. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so going back to Orlando, Florida, the church, the Catholic Church, designated, um, or designate February 11 as the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, with us, traditionally, we always celebrate the fiesta, we always celebrate the Our Lady of Lourdes on a Saturday. So sometimes it is before the 11th, sometimes it's after the 11th, whatever is closest to the 11th. So we always have the fiesta on a Saturday, mm. closest to February 11th. I want to talk more about the fiesta mm -hmm. and what your family does during that time. Mm -hmm. But let's take a break first. Okay. We'll be back after this break. Half a day, Zantiro. I'm Leo Pangilinan with the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. We'd like to take a moment to thank our generous sponsors who have made possible the many programs in our community like this show. We couldn't have done it without them. And if you value the work we do and would like to make a contribution to our efforts, we ask that you consider making an in-kind or cash contribution to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Any amount is appreciated, and donations of up to $5,000 qualify for an educational tax credit. We appreciate your partnership and support Sizus Maasi, Olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. Senor Manny, um, we were talking about how your family helps take care of Santa Lourdes. When we say your family, like, who are we talking about? Because there's quite a number of you, especially in Estejo. <laughs> yes. So Asteo actually belonged to the Diaz family. Okay. Uh, my grandma, Ignacia Sablan Diaz, married my grandpa, Manuel Mindiola de Borja. And so from marriage, then the, the family of Ignacia Diaz um, gave the land to her. And so it became a Borja land after the marriage, and um, she had nine children, and my father was the youngest one. And so all my uncles and aunties, have, including my father, have passed away. And in, in terms of the, uh, the grandchildren of Ignacia, they're so myself, you know, my generation, and just a few more who are still alive. And so my father is Vicente. The first, the first uh, fiesta day, the the food and, and in the beginning the fiesta was held in the morning, and so at that time 
there, there were no electricities, you know, there was no electricity. And um, people would prepare the food throughout the night. Sometimes they brought in a generator or something using just the lamp, you know, the, the falut. And so eventually we changed from celebrating it in the morning to in the afternoon to make it e easy on the people who cook, cook the food. So. And, and so the first um, fiesta was held at my, our place, my dad's house, farm, our farm. And then the second year, my uncle and my cousin, my uncle Ignacio, and my cousin Bembar, offered to also um, help to serve food. So that was the beginning of having more than one place where they serve food. Mm. And um, yeah. <laughs> what is, for those who may not be familiar, what is the purpose of having a fiesta or a day uh, dedicated to Santa Lourdes? I guess the fiesta is just part of the church kind of activities, you know. They celebrate uh, the fiestas for San Isidro, um, Mount Carmel, like that. In honor of various saints. That's correct, yeah. See? Mm -hmm. You know, this seems like a lot of work. Uh, that your family has been doing for generations now mm -hmm. out of the goodness of your heart. Um, do you, how are you able to sustain this, especially, you know, um, really being open to the community? And how can the community help you continue the tradition? You know, we are in a place where the community is very generous. So it, it makes it easy. Yeah, with the generosity of the people, it's it's, it's, it's it's not just like a one family thing doing it. It's the community helping. Mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, I've been to Santa Lourdes. I think it may have been after a storm, and uh, there was a gentleman there cleaning up. What does it take to maintain this area to keep it clean and to uh, keep it really comfortable for people to come and reflect or, or pay their respects or pray? You know, what does it take? You know, as I said, the fig tree there, more than once a year the leaves will all fall down because a new set of leaves would be there. That's what it takes to, um, to, to keep it just during those times when the leaves are all falling to just sweep, sweep them away and, um, you know, um, clean the candles, that the wax in the candle and... Because people can come and light candles for yes, prayers. And, 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 and we put candles there for people to use, to mm -hmm. make, yes. But it's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so beautiful though for not being so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, um, what is a proper way that a person can, I mean, as I mentioned, Santa Lourdes is a, is a popular tourist spot. Um, uh, I know that there are tours that come in, um, even locals, you know, we like to go in and, and uh, visit. What is the proper way to show respect in a place like this? Yes, um, the place, the way I see it, is a really good place for prayer and meditation. Um, you don't have to be of a particular faith to, to visit, you know, not necessarily being a Catholic, but any, any faith that you have, just to go there and just to, to relax and meditate, you know, just to, to be at peace. And so the proper way is to not be noisy when you're there, to give respect to people who are there to be quiet. And that's one of the challenges we have with uh, the tourists because, you know, we are all tourists at one time in our lives to when we go to other places. And as a tourist, we want to celebrate and have fun. And so sometimes we forget, uh, for those tourists who come there, f forget that maybe people are praying and so they can be a little bit loud. But um, eventually they're learning to with the tour guides to make them 
we want them to explain about the shrine before coming into the shrine so that once they get in there, it will be quiet. Hmm. Yeah. That's a nice compromise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other interesting things about Esteo Village that you might be interested to share? Yes. <clears throat> um, we have the uh, Totut, the, the Mariana's food dove. I've seen that at Santa Lourdes. That's the only place I've seen a male Totut, yes. brightly colored. Okay. And so we have those, and uh, they almost every day make sound, you know, <laughs> like that. And then there's also the fakpi, the, the, the kind of like a turn looking bird, but it has a long tail. It, it has a spot there where they, they nest. And if you're lucky, you may see them like in the afternoon flying off from the, from the, uh, from the, one of the holes in the, in the rocks. And that's, mm. that's a very special thing to see because fat bees are not that common. Is yeah. it white? It's white. Mm. It's white and has a long tail. Yes. And they say that they use the long tail to, to catch fish, you know, as the, uh, to bait fish as they hover nip. over the water. Uh, yes, yeah. with the tail touching the fish nipping on that, and then they would just grab the... Wow, okay. Yeah. And so there's a lot of birds. There's a lot of um, uh, sali, you know. So to, to hear birds, St. Lourdes is a good place to hear, hear them. This is very true. Yes. I know there's another popular sightseeing spot there. You go further into Esteo. Mm -hmm. um, it's known in Chamorro as Punta Gloria, that mm -hmm. part of the island. Mm -hmm. Some people call it Infinity Pool, but I always like to give respect to yes. the indigenous name. Um, do you, did you ever go down to that cliffside when you were a kid? No. Too busy working on the farm? Yes, <laughs> very, very, true. Yeah. very true. We kind of like stayed at the farm when we were, when we were there, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. What kind of crops were you growing at that time? Oh, corn. Um, Tomatoes, uh, uh, me melons, and watermelons, and and then we have those fruit trees, you know, tangerines and crops, uh, um, cucumber. And in the fifties, we would take our crop, go down to the to the dock, and sell them because the the navy ship would take them to Guam. Oh, really? Yes. Very nice. Yes. So, um, living in your little quiet village across the street from Santa Lourdes, what is your hope for the future of your village and, and the Santa Lourdes Shrine? My hope is that it will continue to be a place where people can come and just uh, relax and be at the moment, you know, to, to meditate, to to take a break from the busy, busy lifestyle that we all have. Mm -hmm. Because the energy there is really conducive to making you relax, making you, making you, um, yeah, relax and happy. Is that why you seem very relaxed and Ho at peace? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Senor, thank you for sharing this part of uh, our island history. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Except to repeat again that the place is a good place to come for prayer and meditation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's open 24 hours. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank and thank you. you also to your family and to the other community members who work with your family in helping keep this place uh, beautiful, peaceful, mm -hmm. and sacred. Thank you so much. Our guest today has been Manuel Flores Borja. He and his family, along with the community, as he has said, help uh, maintain and take care of the Santa Lourdes Grotto in Esteo. If you haven't been there yet, uh, this might be a good week to go there and visit and have some quiet time. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry.
Your Humanities Half Hour has been made possible in part by a major grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Democracy demands wisdom. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities. For more information or to share your thoughts, contact the Northern Marianas Humanities Council at nmhcouncil.org or on social media at 670 Humanities, that's 670 Humanities.